The whole story began with a tea party on the terrace of a castle. A lady, who was a very rich, beautiful girl with white hair and blue eyes, was sitting quietly on the terrace drinking tea when her husband came up to her. He told her that he had met another person whom he had fallen in love with. That's why he asked the lady to break off the engagement. The lady was shocked by such impudence and could not believe that it was really happening. He was also about to be promoted to the rank of Commander-in-Chief of the Holy Knights, and that is why he decided to start a new life with the woman he loved. But the lady took one look at him and realized that he had a rather striking appearance, a handsome face, dark hair, and for that alone he was already receiving praise from others, and now he was also being promoted to the rank of Commander-in-Chief. In other words, isn't this the place of the protagonist of the novel? The lady asked him, what is your real name? Are you Aaron and Taras? But what difference does it make how she knows it when he has been deceiving her all this time? He had been deceiving her for three years, even though she knew something was wrong. Aaron said, Isn't our marriage an arranged marriage? Isn't it all a fake? We didn't have a serious relationship. But he agreed to pay alimony. After calming down, late in the evening, she took a drink and went to the garden. Although it was not love, she believed that maybe someday it would be. She cried and shouted why it was so unfair to her. And at that moment, she saw another character in the novel. Hyperion Seleucus is a prince, a man who is called a terrible murderer, but is also said to be incredibly handsome and intelligent. Looking at his hair, it seems as if it is woven from golden threads, and his eyes are red like hot blood. But more than that, he would be the perfect match for Our Lady. That is why, as soon as he came closer, she shouted, Let's get married! Of course, he was extremely surprised by this proposal. Frightened by the silence, the lady continued to say, of course, a marriage without dating is rather strange, but why delay the pleasant? And at that moment he smiled and gently looked at her and agreed that it was an interesting proposal. And then touching her face and looking directly into her eyes, he said, Let's get married. The next morning, when she woke up in her bed, the lady noticed that she was feeling sick and tried to remember what had happened yesterday. She did not understand whether the man she had seen yesterday was real. It just seemed like a good dream. Golden hair, enchanting eyes, and the imperial family of Seleucus, said to have been blessed by the sun god himself. Impossible, the lady cried out. If it were him, she would have been hanged in the square for her insolence. But still, he was very attractive, even if it was only her imagination. But it doesn't matter now. Because three years ago, the main character woke up in the body of a woman named Kayla Veritas from the novel The River of Oblivion. She lived these three years in comfort, or so she thought. As it turned out, Kayla was a thief who was about to die. While she was immersed in her memories, there was a knock at the door. It was her maid, who asked if the lady had an appointment with the Marquis Charles. The lady did not remember, but she could not help it, as he was already waiting for her in the drawing room. Emma, the maid, began to help the lady get ready and emphasized that the Marquis was getting prettier every day. The lady just looked at her with an angry look and asked her how she got to the bedroom last night. Emma replied that she did not know, because she thought the lady had gone out with the Marquis, and when she came in the morning, the lady was already asleep in her bed. She said, and went to check on the Marquis, while the lady, not receiving the desired answer, simply fell on the bed, and thought that the Marquis and she were strangers. A few minutes later, the maid returned and was depressed that the lady was not ready yet. The lady hoped that the Marquis had already left, and she would not have to see him again, but as it turned out, he was waiting patiently for her and wanted to talk. She got angry and dressed and went down to his room. Why did you come here? She shouted loudly. Then she continued. Are you afraid that I will be the first to tell everyone how you cheated on me? But she did not tell anyone anything. Instead, he ignored her words and only asked her how she got home last night. She didn't understand why he was asking and how he knew. He got angry because he believed that he was still her husband and had the right to know everything that was going on. As soon as she wanted to give him her answer, two men entered the room and said, And now our time has come. These two men were the prince and the duke, who was our lady's father. Her father said that he had heard the maid say that yesterday his daughter had been brought home by the Marquis Aran Antiras, and that he wanted to know if she was all right. As for Lady Kayla, this was her last warning about such tricks. The duke thanked the Marquis for taking care of his daughter. He also emphasized his daughter's guilt, saying that he was ashamed of her and her actions. He also asked if the lady knew the future Prince Hyperion Seleucus because he had sent her a letter. She replied that she did not, but she took the letter. She was incredibly surprised by the letter and eagerly opened it to find out what it said. The letter said that the prince had found out about her fiancé, who would be attending a dinner at the royal court 
and that she would be there too, and if she decided to deceive him, then let her do it right. He added that this was no longer a request, but an order, adding the words, My princess, at the end. This surprised Lady Kayla, but also made her happy. In the palace, all the maids and even other ladies whispered about Kayla, while Kayla herself sat in her bedroom, rereading the letter and dreaming of his majesty. But at that moment her peace was broken when her brother burst into the room. Shouting her name, he wanted to know everything, especially whether she had really received a letter from the prince, and how long she had been in contact with him. Her brother's court servant remarked that the young master was being insolent, and how long it had been since he had seen his sister. He replied that it did not matter. Her brother asked again how Hyperion knew her, and whether she knew about his terrible secret. He emphasized that Hyperion would never talk to someone like her, because he was just a crazy guy. But his servant said they had nothing to worry about, because the prince has a moon-powered holiday, and her name is Leda Phoebe, the main character of the novel. And as everyone knows, it is the power of the moon that can crush the madness of the sun, and she was with Hyperion all her life. She asked him many times, and asked him for the last time if he had ever loved her, but his answer was no, never. Despite everything, the prince didn't even look at her as a woman. He went so far as to spoil the essence of the saint. While the servant was telling this story, Our Lady's brother took the letter and began to read the contents. The lady was angry because it was her personal. When he finished reading, he told Kayla to wear her ring to the meeting tomorrow. He asked her not to take it off ever and anywhere. This ring had been with her since she came into this world, and she had never taken it off and considered it something out of the ordinary. It was specially made for her and for the whole world, and there was only one on her hand, the brother emphasized. And since the future prince would be at this event, it was impossible to treat him impolitely. Although Lady Kayla thought none of this was important, since she would be attending the event as the bride of the Marquis. But her brother knew that his sister and the Marquis would soon be separated. She was shocked that he knew this, and knew that the Marquis had cheated on her with another woman. He knew everything from the very beginning. As soon as he saw the man, he knew that he could only talk well and nothing else. Kayla was surprised at her brother's reaction and concern. She hadn't realized until then how much her family cared about her. Kayla's brother suggested that she break off the engagement herself, even though she didn't want her father to know. Even the servant emphasized that it would be the right decision to break off the engagement, since it was not her fault, but the fault of that fool. Indeed, he had decided to turn against the Veritas family, and that was not something that was easily forgiven. Then they just had to come up with the next plan of action. Raphael, by the way, was the name of the heroine's brother. He was worried about his sister and tried to help her resolve the situation. But Kayla was only sad and could not believe that this could ever happen to her. Her brother noticed that she was not well and asked her what was wrong. She replied that when she thought of Hyperion, her heart beat faster, but at the same time, she was afraid that she would not be able to return from that dinner alive. The next day, everything was happening in the royal castle, where everyone was busy preparing a feast. While the lady was quarreling with the Marquis, who once again asked her about the prince and why he had invited her, Kayla didn't understand why he cared so much and told him to be polite, because there would be many eyes watching the whole situation. However, he still insisted on answering and wanted her to explain the whole situation first. She continued to ignore him, so he aggressively shouted at her about her relationship with the prince. But all her thoughts were occupied with Hyperion, and as soon as she wanted to answer, the arrival of the prince was announced in the banquet hall. At that moment, everyone shouted together, Glory to the son of our empire! Taking his seat, Hyperion unbuttoned his shirt and put his feet on the table. The other duke said that he, as a famous personality, should sit like a prince and wear his clothes properly. The prince just smiled and said, Anyone who has been on the battlefield knows how to ignore that. And if you, Marquis Bastion, feel uncomfortable at my banquet, you should rest and leave. The Marquis only replied that everything was fine, and that he felt bad only because he was old. The prince only said that in that case, let the Marquis be patient, because it was very noisy. Our Lady just looked at the prince and his actions in awe. There was a very tense atmosphere in the air. Another Marquis addressed the prince and told him that they had come to him with drinks made with the freshest fruit and flower honey. The guests were just thrilled to try these drinks, saying that it was a great honor just to see it. Everyone praised the incredibly sweet and delicious smell, and especially the look of the drinks. This nectar in glasses was called the drink of the gods. But the lady also thought that these were also glasses with poison, and at such moments it is useful to know the original story. Because without looking at the duke's sweet smile, the Ludus family is the most nasty and cunning family. His family uses poisons very easily and skillfully, 
and their successor was recently announced. They say that he eliminated his rival by poisoning him, and in order to get rid of the smell of the poison, he used only fresh and strongly smelling fruits. While she was thinking about this, Duke Lutus noticed that she did not want to try the drink, and thought that perhaps Princess Veritas did not like fruit juices. She only replied that she was allergic to berries, but would accept the gift with gratitude to the Duke. Duke Lutus apologized for not paying attention to this earlier. While all the guests were discussing the latest developments in the kingdom, Lady Kayla caught Prince Hyperion's eyes on her. She was embarrassed, and wondered why he was looking at her like that, but she was distracted from her thoughts. The lady across the street asked if Princess Veritas was okay. She thought it would be hard to make friends with her, but to her surprise, she was having a lot of fun with Kayla. She asked Kayla to tell her some good news, because they all want to hear about her upcoming wedding. However, Lady Kayla assured her that there was nothing. She had no news. But her marquis said that very soon, they would tell them all about the wedding news. Kayla was angry at this answer, because they were on the way to getting married, and so she quietly told the marquis that she was not comfortable now, and that he had better not annoy her. However, the marquis decided not to listen to Kayla, and shouted that the prince himself had invited them to this celebration to bless their marriage. The prince was angered by this insolence, but he smiled and asked the princess how to bless them. Lady Kayla was excited because she knew that the prince remembered that night and was waiting for her to act. The prince played with her, and that is why he said that after that night he thought he would go insane because he missed her. Although Kayla saw the temptation in the prince, she considered him a heartless monster, a devil in the guise of an angel, addicted to the blood of demons, but she still wanted to see Hyperion Seleucus for what he was. When the guests heard this, they were shocked. They had many questions for Lady Kayla. They all wanted to know who she was to the prince and what would happen to the saint. But the worst thing was that everyone felt sorry for Marquis Charles. The Marquis decided to take advantage of the situation and pretended to be surprised, demanding answers from the princess. He dared to address the prince and ask what exactly he was doing with a married woman last night. The prince only smiled, but also asked if you all could handle this information. The Marquis calmly said, It means that Kayla cheated on me and now wants to get an annulment. Everyone believed him and felt sorry for the Marquis and despised the princess and her actions. Only Kayla knew what really happened and was angry with him and his lies. But she also realized that if she started to justify herself, it would look like it was true and she regretted what she had done. It turns out that he wins in this situation anyway, and he has no conscience if he does this to me a second time. But she didn't want to give up, so she calmly said, It's not my betrayal, Lord Carl. You know this better than I do, but if you want, I will tell everyone the truth. She only added that he was not afraid of being disgraced and losing his promotion. It was her last warning to him to keep his real secret. So she played along and thanked the prince for comforting her in such moments. The prince was amused and only added, I'm always happy to help, because thanks to you, this is the first time I've had so much fun. After saying that, the prince stood up and walked to the exit, despite the fact that dinner had not even started and he was breaking all the rules. Everyone bowed to him, and only one princess hoped that he would not approach her. As he walked away, the prince looked at everyone with a stern look, and when he noticed Lady Kayla, he stopped and looked at her. Lifting her face, he looked her straight in the eye and said, this is going to be much more fun than I thought. The princess smiled, but turned her head to the other side, and replied that he was very bright, calling him the brightest sun she had ever seen. This surprised the prince, and he asked why she was avoiding him if they had so much to tell each other. This angered the marquis, and he stood up and confronted the prince, saying that just because he was the son of the empire, it did not mean that he could get everything he wanted. This act angered the prince, who did not expect such a reaction from the lower status marquis. He reminded the Marquis that he would not dare to stand in his way. Frightened, the Marquis only apologized that he was her fiancé and was defending her honor. But the Prince knew it was a lie and asked him, So who betrayed whom, Marquis? Calling the Marquis a fool, he told him to get out if he understood and was afraid of the Prince. The Lady decided to intervene in this dispute and began to apologize to the Prince on behalf of the Marquis. The Prince took her hand and told her that she had more courage than her fiancé if she was still defending him. She also apologized for that day. It was a terrible day and she was very ashamed of it. The prince interrupted her and said that he would not forgive her, that he needed her now and would be waiting for her in the evening at the same place where they met last night. But the duke did not want to give up. He realized what he had lost and wanted her to forgive him and talk to him. But she saw no point in talking to him because he didn't deserve her. When he heard that she would not forgive him, he seemed to go wild. 
He grabbed her by the arm and demanded answers, wanted to know how long she had been talking to the prince and why she had chosen this particular madman. He thought it was a foolish idea, even though she knew it well. The court family, in which Carl was the only son, but after his family broke up, he was sold to a baron's family and adopted there. There, every member of the family hated him and condemned him. It was a terrible attitude and suppression of a person. Dependent on proving his strength and importance and having a fear of being abandoned, all this caused him to feel inferior. The reason why I am angry with him now is that he left me. And he realized that, he realized that he treated me terribly and regretted his actions. But the reason I fell in love was because of you. You have always needed me, he said, and the lady was speechless. She didn't know what to say. But he knew what to ask, and so he asked her what good she found in this crazy man. She took her hands away from him and smilingly said, Wasn't it your idea to break off our engagement? He told her that it was an arranged marriage. It was all a fake. But would he have been happy even if she was his fiancée, but the one he didn't love and would never love? So why was he angry then? Now she was playing with him. She provoked him to anger by asking him, Are you angry because I found someone better than you, someone like the future prince? She pointed out where he belonged and added that she was not garbage to be thrown away like that. Now all his next actions would be useless. She didn't need him anymore. Although he was disappointed, there was really nothing he could do about it. It was his betrayal, his mistake, and now the past. Since Kayla was finally over her ex-fiancé, she had to deal with the most important thing. And of course she went to the garden where she met the prince that evening. Everything looked strange, and she was the only one in the garden. Except for a swing that was on fire, she found nothing, so she decided to sit there. She was upset and thought that she would never have a peaceful life again. Suddenly, as she was deep in thought, she saw something black coming towards her. It was a black panther, which frightened the girl because she could not understand where a black leopard came from in the royal garden. She screamed out in fright, Why did a leopard suddenly appear here? But there was no one else in the garden. Suddenly, the lady saw these red eyes. Not only did they have a red glow, but they also had something similar to the prince's. Just from seeing him, the lady's heart began to beat faster. His appearance was menacing and at the same time somehow incomprehensible. And after only a minute of thinking, the animal started running and the girl covered her face with her hands in fear that it would tear her apart. She thought that she had angered the Prince of the Sun and that was why he sent this animal to kill her. But in reality, this sweet cat wanted to be loved and lay down on the princess's feet to be petted. The princess was surprised at the animal's sweet reaction the black leopard raised its head and looked at the girl with big red eyes full of love. The lady stroked the animal and looked at the cute ears and fluffy body of the leopard. She remembered that in the original story, he was the most terrifying animal here. And at that moment, a man approached them. It was a prince. He smiled sweetly and said that it was the first time he had seen Bobble, the black leopard's name, so happy and kind to other people. Glory to the sun and the empire, she said. The prince just silently watched the princess play with the big cat and admired them. Surprisingly, for a minute, he was lost in his thoughts and memories. He found himself in his office, where he said, You must have heard of Borders, a place where no one can enter. Then he asked, Did the Empress send you or not? Pointing his weapon directly at the girl. He received only silence in response, so he asked the girl again if she was afraid of losing her life. The girl replied that she had done nothing wrong to him or his family, so she had nothing to fear. Then he demanded to know how she had managed to overcome the barrier and why his familiars, that is the black leopard, allowed her to approach him. However, the girl denied everything. She did not understand what he was talking about. She begged him for mercy and understanding because he himself understood that she had nothing to do with it. But he did not believe her. That is why she asked him for an opportunity to justify himself because she had no intention of killing him. Then he looked at his hands, thought about what he was doing, and sat down at his table, offering the princess some tea. But the girl refused and said she wanted to hear the prince's answer. He asked her if she remembered that day and what she had said to him. The princess didn't remember that night because she was drunk and desperate to be left behind. But the prince decided to remind her that when he met her in that garden, she had asked him to marry her, and he had agreed. But the girl could not believe it, so she quarreled with him about how he could do such a thing. The prince was tired of this empty talk, he was not interested, and he could not believe that she did not remember that night. But he said to her, let's get married. The girl wanted to say something else, that she was sorry that she had to leave her former fiancé, 
But when she heard his words, she was speechless. She was surprised not just by the idea, but by the proposal of marriage from the Prince of the Sun himself. The Prince emphasized that the lady had broken up with her fiancé and that there was nothing to stop her from marrying him, even though it was an accident. He didn't understand what her problem was, why she couldn't be with him if he wanted to, and there was nothing wrong with that. For the first time in a long time, he had so much fun and it was all thanks to her. The princess thought a lot about how marriage with such a person and romantic relationships were possible. She was ready to die rather than marry him. And at the same time, what to do with St. Phoebe? If he married a princess and not a saint, the temple would turn away from him. That's why she told the prince that he needed a wife with a high status, even though the princess was suitable for him, and she wasn't going to give up and was looking for other options. For example, that there were many candidates and he needed a special reason to marry her. The prince denied all her words and looked her straight in the eye and said, Kayla Veritam, I need you. The next event took place in Princess Kayla's palace. A letter was sent to her castle, which her father brought to her, and said that it was a letter from the main castle of the king with a marriage proposal. Her brother was upset because he was trying to hide her from the eyes of the sun prince. We nervously asked his sister if the letter really came from the castle and from the prince himself, from Hyperion Sol Lucius. The whole family gathered in one room and discussed the idea and family of Duke Lutus and all his efforts to woo his only daughter to the royal family. Although the Luthus are not a simple family, there are four high-level sorcerers in their family, and yet the prince rejected their proposal, which came straight from the temple. He eventually sent a marriage proposal to Kayla's family. Everyone was interested in how she had made the prince fall in love with her and how she would repay the opportunity. It was not polite of her aunt, so Kayla's brother put her in her place by reminding her that she was not even from their county, and it was none of her business. But the princess couldn't understand what her aunt meant by payback. But more than her aunt's words, she was only concerned about the letter and what to do with it, what to answer. So she intervened in the family's conversations and announced that she would refuse the offer of marriage to the prince, to which her aunt replied that she should not do this, and angrily she thought about how she could rub the marquis's nose in it for leaving her and betraying her. Even if their marriage is destroyed by mutual consent, the woman still has to suffer because other people will talk about their family and the broken wedding. Brother Raphael tried to calm his aunt down for torturing the princess, even though her ex had made the mistake. But the aunt did not listen. She continued to talk about her own and told everyone to open their eyes to this situation, because no one cares who is to blame. People just want to gossip about dukes and princes. As we all know, rumors quickly disappear when new, bigger ones appear. To put it another way, she needed to move on to a better man, such as a prince. The duke told Aunt Rachel to shut up, because there was too much news for one day and it was time for her to go home. Her father told Princess Kayla to do what she thought was right and what she felt. Her father respected every decision and believed that it would be the right one. Fortunately, the princess's family did not question her thoroughly about the breakup, the prince, or even why she had been silent all this time. She decided that she should meet His Majesty soon. As time passed, the lady sat in her room and wondered if the letter had reached the right address, if it was definitely from the prince and for her. She was upset and kept asking Amy, the maid, to bring her more and more coffee, but Eva refused because she thought she had had enough for the day. And when Eva was about to leave to get the lady some warm milk, Kayla stopped her and asked why her face was all over the magazines. As it turned out, the biggest news in the castle was the princess and her relationship with the future Prince of the Sun. Everyone wanted to know how she was able to melt his icy heart. What was even worse was that her Aunt Rachel gave an interview to a magazine and told her niece's secrets. This shocked both the princess and the maid Eva. They both could not understand when and how it happened. As at one point, they heard shouting and applause outside the window. There were many people who had become Kayla's fans and wanted to interview her for the magazine, and all these people surrounded her father's carriage, and they just bombarded him with questions and their attention, and he just tried to run away from them in a confused way. Who didn't want to know how the princess met the prince, and who fell in love with whom first? And what if it was all a lie for the sake of popularity? Gossip in the kingdom spread quickly. Seeing this whole situation, Kayla decided that the best solution would be to go to the royal court and talk to the prince. But besides the news of the marriage, she also heard news of a divorce. As it turned out, her father had decided to give the northern mines to her ex's family as compensation. She couldn't believe it. Couldn't it really be true? But how could her father do this, and how could her brother allow it? The princess was so angry that she ran into the room of Enoch, 
who was in charge of all the orders and lands, without warning. She shouted that this all meant why her ex had received the land as compensation. He calmly replied that it was compensation for his family. Although she should be the one to receive the compensation, since he cheated on her, Yanok told her that the family of her former marquis was ready to sue to get those lands and minerals. Even though Enoch said that the land was not valuable and that he should leave her alone, she was furious that he dared to sue her after all he had done. But no one knew that it was not just useless fields. There was a mine there, which no one knows about except the princess. And in that mine are sacred relics. And it is the person who finds all these sacred relics and can awaken the spirit of desire who will be able to gain unprecedented power. Therefore the princess decided that they must return the mine. She will not leave it to her ex in his unreliable hands. Enoch decided that she would want to sue the Marquis family, but she had a better plan. She was not going to waste her energy on those who were not worth it. But since they already had enough problems, he didn't want her to create more. Although she had accepted the Marquis' betrayal and his treatment of her, she could not forgive him for deciding to attack her family. But Enoch thought otherwise and tried to stop her from doing anything stupid. But she disagreed with him and believed that she could take care of herself. She was no longer a child and was capable of solving family problems. She assured him that everything would be fine and he did not need to worry because she had a solid plan. After a few days, the situation did not stop. People were very interested in the details, where and how they met, and that she was a real beauty and the prince made the right choice. The princess decided to use this as an advantage for herself, and so she started answering questions from the press. She told them that she had indeed received a letter from the prince asking her to marry him. But as the press knew, the lady had just recently broken off her engagement to the Marquis of Carl, so they wondered if she would accept the prince's offer. She replied that yes, she would become the prince's wife. Upon hearing this good news, the prince was overjoyed and pleased that she spoke so confidently to the press, and he finally got the long-awaited answer. Even though the prince's servant thought she was a shy and quiet girl, the prince assured him that she was amazing and beautiful, and yet the prince was sure that he had not made a mistake in choosing his wife. Lady Kayla and the maid Eva were discussing the latest news and the fact that the recent interview had been published in all the newspapers. But there was no turning back. They had to think of something else. Eva decided to distract the princess from her thoughts and reminded her that a new market was opening in the city today and they should go there. And what interested the lady the most was that there would be a slave auction at this market, which she wanted to attend. The princess was excited, but was quickly interrupted by Eve, who said that this market was in a dangerous area and she should take a butler or knights with her. But the lady objected and emphasized that she should go there alone. Ava also reminded her of the meeting with the prince at three o'clock today, and a carriage would be coming from the castle to pick her up, so the princess had to hurry. The lady agreed and ordered the servants to help her get ready, and Eva told them to keep it a secret and tell the others that they were going to the salon. Although Eva did not like the lady's idea, she could not do anything about it, because the princess had to go to the auction to buy a slave who, according to the story, would take on all the sins of the main characters. It was a guy named Messus, who would soon be called the Messenger of the Wolves and the Sword of Carl, so she couldn't lose him. On the street, everyone paid attention to the lady because she was very beautiful and her face was printed on all the magazines. The girls tried to walk quietly and unnoticed through the city, despite the fact that all the newspapers were talking about the Veritas family. The princess also heard talk of a saint who had been by the prince's side all her life, but he had ignored her and chosen a completely different woman, and the county of Lutus was rejected three times, even though they are quite powerful. They all must have felt very uncomfortable right now because of all their attempts to marry their daughters to the prince. And since the prince personally sent an engagement letter to Duchess Veritas, it meant that there was something special about her that the others did not have. But Eva was interested in something else entirely. What kind of a slave was this? Why did the duchess take a blank check for him? Was this slave so precious to her? The lady only assured her that this particular slave would become very famous in the future. The auction that everyone had been waiting for began. The slaves were driven to the stage where people were looking at them and bidding to see who would give the most. The lady was just watching what was happening, and then the very slave she had come to get was brought on stage. When people saw him, they were ready to give more money, because they realized that he was from the Leighton tribe and had a beautiful face. The lady was ready to buy him as someone who was the first to buy him for a thousand, when other slaves were bought for fifty gold pieces. And as soon as they wanted to set the price and sell him, someone else shouted out two thousand gold pieces. Then they even offered three thousand, 
and then the lady shouted out 5,000 gold pieces. But her competitor didn't want to give up and shouted out that he would buy it for 8,000. Of course, the lady didn't want to give up, so she was ready to give 10,000. Everyone just stood there in silence and couldn't believe that someone was willing to buy a slave for that kind of money, and the lady wasn't ready to give up, so her competitor left. The lady was very pleased with her purchase, and the trader was in a hurry to get the money. Kayla started asking the trader where else he traveled, but he kept everything a secret, so she told him that she could make a bigger deal and pay much more money, which he liked very much. And since the last auction would be held on the third Saturday of the following month at two o'clock in the afternoon in the western part of the place, as the trader said, the lady made a note and said she would come. But in fact, she hated the nasty illegal traders and wanted to do something about it. At the same moment, a man came up and brought her slave and told her that a man did not want to let them go and claimed that he really needed this man. Because of the slave's stubbornness, the trader told the lady that he would teach him to obey and had already taken out a stick to beat him, but the lady stopped him, saying that he had no right to touch what belonged to her. This surprised the slave. He did not understand why he was here, and the lady wanted to see his face, which was covered by a mask. However, the trader objected and rejected this request because the contract was not finalized. The situation was complicated by the fact that if information about this illegal contract came out, they would all be hanged in the castle square. So when the lady asked when, when she could get her slave and see his face, the trader replied that it would take at least a month. This made her angry. She didn't have that much time. She needed to follow her plan immediately. But the merchant didn't want any problems, so he couldn't let her rush because he didn't want to be hung on the prince's neck. The lady had to accept this. She agreed to such conditions and only wanted to be sure that her slave would not run away before she received him because she had not even seen his face. But the trader assured her that there was no reason to worry because the slave's mask was a magical thing that he could not remove without the key, which only the trader had, and this mask could also bind a person on his orders. And as it turned out, she could contact the slave at any time, although usually the key to the slave was given on the day of its receipt, but the lady was a special case, so she would be given the key immediately, and as long as the lady had the key, the slave would not be able to escape. She was very interested in this news, and even decided to forgive the trader for stalling. Taking her quill, she began to read the contract with the trader and asked him to leave the room because she wanted to talk to the slave alone, to which he could not object. As soon as the door of the room closed, the lady asked the slave, Your name is Messis, right? He remained silent, and she continued to say that she would like to meet him when she saw his face, although she could take her time. She told him to wait a little longer, and she would burn the documents proving that he was a slave, but until then he had to protect her, and in return she would give him complete freedom. He had to gather his courage for this month, because he had to show her his honesty and loyalty, and it was clear that the lady would also do this for him in return. She signed the contract and looked at him, noticing how thin and tired he was now. She also opened his shirt and saw a large scar on his chest, and there were many more. He turned silently so that she would not touch him and closed his shirt. The lady liked this, and told him to always do this and show his character if someone offended him. She rang the bell, and at the same moment the salesman came running in and was happy that they had finished talking. She was ready to hand him the signed contract and warned him that she had a condition that the wounds on his body should heal completely. But before she decided to leave, Messis spoke to her and asked if she would really take him away from there. From now on, she would be his mistress and take him away as soon as she could. The only thing he asked her for was a name, but she told him to remember it as Bella for now. She wasn't ready to give her real name because she wasn't sure she could trust him yet, to which he smiled and said he would wait for his mistress. After that, she went to the salon, put on a new dress and makeup, and ordered to burn the clothes she wore at the fair and set off. But as soon as she had walked a little bit, someone attacked her from behind and put a handkerchief to her face, saying that there was no danger to her if she did not resist. The lady was surprised that this person knew who she was and did not understand what he wanted from her, so she screamed and tried to get away, but he dragged her into a room and threw her on the floor and said to someone, Lady, here, just as you asked. The man told the kidnapper that he had asked him to treat her gently, even though she was resisting. It was also strange to the men that any other person should have already lost consciousness, but it was obvious that the lady was not affected by the magic. As you know, Magic does not work only on those who have holy power, and in the empire only the saints of the moon and the future prince of the sun have holy power, so it seemed silly to the kidnappers. One of the men got out and went to guard the entrance so that no one could enter the room. 
While the other wondered why he had started all this, he said to the lady that she would soon be better. She just needed to sleep a little, and if she would talk to him, all this would not have happened. The lady woke up and saw her kidnapper, and in anger she hit him in the face, confusing him. She came to her senses and tried to understand why she was here and what he wanted. The kidnapper turned out to be Marquise Carl Bale, her former fiancé. While the lady was being kidnapped, Eva tried to understand why Kayla was gone for so long and whether she was sure she was okay. As she walked around the market looking for her, she overheard men on the street talking about a crazy woman who had bought a slave for 10,000 gold pieces. It was the first time they had ever seen such a thing, so they thought it must have been someone from the board. But Eve realized that it was definitely about her lady, and everyone who was at the auction noticed how beautiful the slave's face was. Realizing that if he had black eyes and bright red hair, it meant that he was from the powerful tribe of Latan, which had magic. After listening to all this, Eve decided to ask the men if the lady was still inside the building, but they told her that the woman had left long ago. Eve could not believe it, because during all the time she had been standing there, no one had come out or gone in. The man told her that if that was the case, then the woman must have been kidnapped. The area was dangerous, and there were many hunters for rich people in such passages. She was shocked to hear that. How could a lady be kidnapped? And she just thanked him and decided to go in search of her. She walked the street and shouted, My lady! My lady! But no one answered, so she kept wandering. Until she noticed a wealthy carriage, it was covered with gold, and she realized that it was the carriage of the castle. She ran to her husband in the carriage and asked him to help her, but he just watched in silence as she begged for help. Suddenly, the carriage window opened, and a beautiful blonde man looked out, interested in what was happening outside. Eva just froze in front of the carriage, seeing his majesty in all his glory. While she was staring at the prince and couldn't take her eyes off him, a man in a black robe suddenly jumped down from the carriage, pulled out a sword, and ordered her to get out of the way. The girl was frightened and fell down on the road, begging for forgiveness, and the man in the black robe raised his sword and said, Master, I will kill her if you order me to. Eva began to cry louder and louder and beg for forgiveness, saying that she was only Lady Veritas's maid. The prince stopped the man and asked her if by the name Veritas she meant Lady Kayla Veritas, and the maid answered yes. This clearly interested him, so he asked again, Is this the one who will soon become the wife of the Emperor of the Empire? Ava answered that she was, that's right. The lady told her to wait here while she looked around the square, but she hasn't returned yet. That's why she was so worried that the lady was lost somewhere or that someone had kidnapped her. She begged him to send this information to the kingdom if he had a communication device. The prince reminded her that the lady should also have this device, but as it turned out, she had forgotten to take it with her, although the prince could not believe it. How could she forget it? He was amused by the thought that Kayla was so fearless and got herself into such trouble and lied to them all. Ava could not tell the whole truth, so she just kept silent. Then the knight asked the prince if he wanted to go in search of Lady Kayla. The prince replied that he had no choice. He would not let anyone steal his bride. He told his servant Babel to look for her in the northern part of the city, so the servant immediately went in search of the prince's lost bride. And the prince continued to think about how much trouble one little girl could cause. While Eve remembered the conversation with the princess, they talked about the prince, golden hair with red eyes, and Babel, with red eyes but black hair. There were rumors around the castle that the prince's black panther, who was also his friend, sometimes turned into a man, but no one knew if it was true. People said that this friend of the prince was very aggressive, so much so that he could even eat the head of an enemy with his fangs, and no one could imagine how scary he was when he turned into a man. But the princess just laughed at him and said that he could not be more terrible than the prince, who had already collected a whole mountain of corpses under his feet. So it turns out that these two men are the same, the future prince and his panther man companion. While they were trying to find the lady, the Marquis tried to talk to her in some old room. He claimed that he had not kidnapped her. He had been waiting for her all night under that tree, and she hadn't even looked at him. For the girl, this meant that he had also been watching her all this time before he dared to kidnap her. But he stood his ground and continued to say that he had not kidnapped her, but had gone to the square to do his own thing until he saw Emu waiting for the lady. He thought that this meant that Kayla was sitting in the salon she used to go to so often, so he had to stop her outside the salon and bring her here to talk to her. But she knew he was lying, so she resisted. She was weak because he used a spell with sleeping herbs against her. He was actually surprised that it hadn't worked on her, 
and that she hadn't lost her balance and fallen asleep. Still, he wanted to talk to her, even though she had nothing else to talk to him about. But he wanted to know why she had chosen the prince. He could not believe that the prince, who was called a real monster, had put on this show just because he loved the girl. The girl angrily replied that he shouldn't care. The guy reminded her that he used to be her lover. She didn't want to listen. She wanted to end the conversation. As soon as she turned away from him, he asked her again. He wanted to know if she had ever loved him, because he was sure that she had. The lady got angry and said that it was all bullshit, and he should let her go, because it was the last time she was being nice to him. He was not satisfied with this answer and did not want to lose his reputation, so he grabbed her hands and demanded that she divorce the prince. Because everyone knew how the kingdom of Lutus was trying to marry off its only daughter to a prince. And as soon as she accepted the prince's proposal and married him, she would immediately become an enemy of the Luthus family. And she must also remember the situation in the royal court, where the empress, the emperor's second wife, and Leon's stepmother, Empress Vitus, is now staying. This means that the only person she cannot control in order is the prince, and that is why she wants to put her trusted person in the place of the princess. She will do it no matter what, because she is from the Luthus family and is the sister of the current Emperor Luthus, and she is a distant relative of the elder sorcerer. The princess was not afraid of her and knew everything about the life of Vitas, who had been thrown out of her family, even though she had devoted herself to the prosperity of her family. It was clear that now she would want to take revenge on them. And in general, the saint awakens a forbidden power with the help of the empress. The marquis convinced the girl that it was very dangerous to be with the prince but she was sure that she was safer with the prince than with this marquis. At least Hyperion is not a two-sided and lying person like Carl. Carl tried to attract her attention somehow and said that he was weakening and becoming powerless with the girl. Kayla knew that he was doing all this only for the sake of the fate of the Northern Mine and was afraid of losing it all when she became the prince's wife. But Carl convinced her that it was all manipulation by the prince and that he was making her feel inferior. He was annoyed that he had abandoned her and cheated on her but she was not upset and still acted as if nothing had happened. He was going crazy every time he saw her because he thought she was the one who left him and why she was never upset or offended by the betrayal. Then the girl realized that he was not interested in her. He did not love her. He only wanted her to be hurt by this act. So the last thing she told him was that she wanted to start a family with him because she believed it was real. But he decided to hurt her, so how stupid was she to believe him and dream of a future together? While you were thinking how else you could insult and betray me, he was just furious at these words, and suddenly there were shouts of pathetic weakling. At that moment, the man guarding the room ran in. Just as he was about to say something, he fell dead to the floor. The Marquis was frightened and shouted, I told you not to let anyone in here. At that moment, the prince knocked on the door and smilingly said that he was an exception, so he would probably join their conversation. He stood in the doorway, knocking and shouting to be opened. The Marquis looked at the lady and showed her the window, which was a secret passage, and when he threw the magic stone, she should run. He also added that he did not mean to offend her, and he was really ashamed of it. As soon as she wanted to ask him something else, the door fell open and the prince entered the room. I was told that you went to the square, he said. Is this place also part of the square? he asked. She was shocked to see him here and with her ex fiance She couldn't help but ask what his majesty was doing in this place and he asked her the same thing. At that moment, the Marquis spoke up and expressed his surprise at seeing the prince here. But the prince was surprised by the man's impudence. How dare he speak to him, and asked him if he had interfered with them in any way. So, moving away from the girl, he decided to find out who this masked man was with whom he had seen his bride. The prince pulled out his sword and asked the man if he knew whose family this weapon belonged to. But he was only silent and afraid. Then the prince put the sword to the man's head and asked him again, and then he pointed the sword at the man's mask to see who was hiding behind it and what men his bride was hiding with. The man just stood there, so the prince had to ask him again if he would show his face or if the prince would find out for himself. Clutching the magic stone in his hands, the man said, Congratulations on your engagement, and, as someone who has loved a lady, I must say that it will be difficult for you. And at the same second, he raised his hand to throw the stone, which would have exploded on impact with a hard surface. The lady knew this, so she instantly screamed for the prince to run away and save himself. She ran to him and jumped on him to throw him aside and save him. He looked at her tenderly and was delighted with this girl, saying that she was incredibly brave, or just very reckless, if she did that. While the girl was trying to recover from what had happened, 
But the Marquis realized that he had finally understood that she had never loved him. He put the stone in his pocket, immediately broke the window, and jumped out. The princess only had time to get up and look out the window to see where he had run to. But he was gone, and the prince offered to help her take revenge. Just one word from her, and he would cut off the head of that fool. He was ready to do anything she asked of him. Just one word from her to take revenge on her ex, and the prince would find him and bring his head to her as a wedding gift. The princess refused this offer and said that she would take revenge on him herself. It was enough for her that the prince had witnessed everything, and she knew that he had let the marquis go on purpose. The prince was amused that she was so clever and quickly figured it out. But anyway, he was happy to play with her and liked this turn of events. A year had passed since the marquis had entered politics and started a business in the kingdom's capital. Though he tried to be a gentleman, in reality he was as wild and terrible as the worst animal without manners and it was interesting how low he would stoop for revenge. But the prince wondered why Kayla did nothing to her captor. She could have at least hit him on the head with her heel. In her mind, she thought that if she had her way, she would have killed him. But she wanted him to realize how pathetic he was while running away. Because, as everyone knows, there is nothing worse than realizing your own worthlessness. Hyperion didn't understand how she could be so calm, because in such cases people usually get angry, and she was absolutely calm. But our princess was not one of those who get angry at things that cannot be changed. There is no point in crying over such things. In her past life, she understood everything. It's much better to think with your head rather than give in to emotions. The prince was touched by these words. He did not expect to hear from her what he realized after three years of torment. That's why he thought they were perfect for each other. The princess remarked that she should be more careful now. He reminded her that she had walked alone in a dangerous area without a means of communication and had been in danger. He sat down and demanded an explanation. How she got there, what the two of them were doing, and what they were talking about. But what could she say, really, that she had gone to a hidden slave market and then been kidnapped by her ex? She just couldn't be honest. That's why she said that she had accidentally met the Marquis on the square where she was walking. But she could not deceive the prince. He said her name and told her that he had no intention of falling for her lies and fairy tales anymore. He wanted to know everything and asked her to tell him only the truth. He asked her one more question, whether she had any questions for the fool who had left her. She had no feelings, but even if she didn't want to, the memories they shared would not disappear. She believed that they saw their future together, believed that everything would be fine with her and Carl, and he only wanted to hurt her. Perhaps she had strong feelings for him, but what does it matter now? It's over. The princess remembered that she wanted to talk to him more about their engagement when someone entered the room. It was Sainan's knightly group, and with them was the Black Panther she had met once before. Exchanging a glance with Babel, he instantly ran and jumped on her. The guards were afraid for the girl's safety. As soon as the panther jumped in, he began to hug her and was happy to see the girl, and Kayla smiled and hugged Babil. The girl asked questions and talked to Babel, and the prince only looked at them jealously. Everyone was surprised that Babel adored the girl so much and acted like a sweet cat not a terrible beast. The prince laughed and told Babel that he had no manners towards a lady. But the moment of fun quickly passed when the prince ordered him to come to his senses and tell him about the situation. And at that very moment, with the help of magic, the Black Panther turned into a tall, handsome, black-haired man with red eyes and a very serious face, as if the cat had never been there. The princess stood there in shock, looking at this guy, unable to believe her eyes, what she had just seen, and thinking that he and Hyperion were incredibly similar. He reported that all of the masked men were detained, and he was waiting for further orders on them. And in other good news, they have the Marquur in custody, but the prince ordered him to be released for now. The guards did not understand this decision, and they expressed their dissatisfaction because the Marquis was trying to harm the prince and his fiancée. Everyone agreed that he deserved to be executed. We all know that the prince likes to have fun, so he didn't want to just kill the Marquis, it would have been too boring. Anyway, that's enough talk about that. It's time to get out of here. Lady Veritas had to go home, so Babel was instructed to take her home. But she had other plans and didn't want to go home, so she decided to run away before Babel noticed. Babel saw her intention to run away and stopped her and asked where she was going. She replied that she was going home. If she was going home, then he would take her there, he said. Although she resisted and claimed that she could get there herself, he was stubborn and did not give in to the lady because he had received an order from the prince. He warned her not to stray far from him, because she was now his mistress. 
Kayla did not understand why and when she became his mistress, but she came to terms with how quickly she became his friend. Let's also not forget about the contract and the slave, who spent his days thinking about the lady and what she'd done for him. He thought she was an interesting girl, even mysterious. He immediately realized that she was Her Majesty and would not associate with such a dirty and disgusting place. But how did she end up there and why did she choose him? Why did she say she would let him go after paying the trafficker so much money? And what did her look mean when she said goodbye? What did she want to say to him and didn't say anything? He felt something he couldn't explain and had never felt before, even though he had been alive for 200 years. He was also worried about how she would look at him when she found out who he really was. But suddenly he heard conversations outside the window. At that moment, the castle guards were looking for Carl and his servants after the situation with the magic stone. He decided to leave the room and see who they were looking for. At that moment, a traitor was running and shouting from the garden. He was forcing all the slaves to work for him, to earn him even more money. He was annoyed that as soon as that rich woman came and bought a slave, he stopped obeying him. So until she took him away, the traitor would be his master, and this slave would have to obey all his orders, otherwise he would be punished. After hearing what Kayla had said, he was not going to obey anyone, especially the one who had imprisoned him and wanted to sell him. The rude and lazy traitor was angry at this attitude, so he took a stick and wanted to teach the impudent boy a lesson. However, the boy did not want to give up and fought back, pushing the traitor to the ground, shouting, My mistress told you all not to touch me, so I won't allow it. He took off his mask, freeing himself. The disgusted merchant did not understand how this was possible. No one but the lady could do this. The guy didn't want the lady to think badly of him, so he hit the impudent man, gagging him. Now let's get back to the news of the castle. The prince was traveling in a carriage with his advisor, who told him about the latest news. As it turned out, Lady Foybe had asked for a personal meeting with His Majesty. Meeting with the prince was important to her. She was ready to skip the service, and all because of the news of the prince's upcoming marriage. However, the prince did not understand what she wanted, so the counselor explained. My lady has always been in love with him, and she works seven days a week just for the sake of the prince and his family. Even now, she is praying for the emperor to regain consciousness. The prince should recognize her services to the kingdom and reward her. All she wants is for the prince to love her in return. He does not want to hear it and orders her to know her place, because with such a desire, she should stay away from him. All she does is try to get into his affairs and life at every opportunity. The counselor could not argue with the prince, so he simply asked why Sir Babel did not avoid Lady Veritas at all. The answer was that he must like her. In fact, Sir Babel hides the prince's greatest dark power. He obeys only him and fulfills only the prince's wishes. The prince and Sir Babel can be considered one and the same, so if Lady Veritas likes one, it means that the counselor asked the prince if he was sure, because Babel does not listen to and does not love even the saint herself, although he has lived with her since childhood, and maybe it is just a temporary interest in a new person. The prince himself did not know if this was the case, but Hyperion knew he had to remember her, even if everyone else forgot who she was. He was waiting for her. During the transfer of the detainees, there was a riot. The villains pretended to surrender voluntarily, but in fact they used explosives. Kayla watched the situation from the carriage window and waited for Vival. Hearing the gossip of people on the street, she realized that Babel was patrolling the city and had caught almost everyone who had participated in the attack on the lady. The lady was only thinking about why she hadn't run away when she had the chance, and while Babel was catching the criminals. And while the soldiers were discussing this situation, she sat quietly and listened. She heard something that made her worry, because Babel had injured his cheek with pieces of glass that had been thrown out during the explosion. And since Babel and the prince are one, if one is injured, the other will feel the pain. But fortunately, the wound was not serious, and so the prince should not have felt it. This reassured the princess because she was very worried about them both. In a few minutes, Sir Babel appeared, and everyone was very happy to see him. He entered the carriage saying that the prince was waiting and it was time for them to go. The lady looked at him and began to realize that he looked like the twin of Prince Lion, and the wound he received during the fight. It must be burning him very badly, so the lady kindly offered to wipe the blood on his wound with her handkerchief because he was injured. But he was like a cat, just looking at her silently, so she came over and put the napkin to his cheek and held it to stop the blood. Looking him directly in the eyes, the lady realized that she thought he was very nice. When she arrived at the castle, she was met by the boy she had seen earlier. He brought her a paper with the terms of the contract. 
an official document, he was to give it to her when she fully moved to the royal court. Lady Kayla had completely forgotten that her wedding was coming up very soon, so it was a preparation before the main event in the castle. While she was examining the prince, he said, Why aren't you smiling like you do on the front page of a magazine? She was shocked. She couldn't think that he had read it. The prince said that he wanted to see her happy at such an important time for them, and he thought she would be happy to get married. She thought that the prince was too strong an opponent for her, and she would not be able to argue with him. He didn't want to rush the wedding either, but after she was kidnapped, he decided it was better not to delay such an important event and not to let her go. Not only did the Marquis dare to kidnap the prince's bride, but he also dared to throw a magic stone in front of the saint himself. This is unforgivable, and despite the fact that Leon has extraordinary holy powers, no one dares to attack him even in a mask, because they will find him and punish him anyway. And this is true, if not for Prince Leon. The lady was very grateful to him, and apologized for saying this so late. He agreed, he should have thanked her earlier for saving him, but for now, her signature on the contract would be enough for him. When she opened the contract, she saw only a blank page. As it turned out, they both needed to write one wish for their partner now and add more wishes over time during the marriage. She decided to think about the wishes a bit, so she suggested that the prince write first. He easily agreed and started writing. While he was writing, she was peeking at his contract. He expressed only one wish and said that they would write everything else after the marriage and that they would sign this contract for a year. But the lady decided to ask him for the northern mine, which she shared with the former marquis. Although she could have asked for something more expensive and more important, she decided to get the mine, even though everyone knew there was nothing there. The prince was surprised by this request, because he could do anything she wanted, and she was asking for nothing more than a nonsense. He thought about it. However, she could not tell him that this very chapel contains the greatest treasures of the world, the most powerful magic, and a relic called the Tears of the World. She simply replied that she wanted to settle there in the future and therefore asked for it now. She couldn't believe that this was really happening to her. And while the counselor was still telling her something about the marriage procedure, she felt that she didn't deserve it all because she was a secondary character. The lady asked the prince about her marital duties. He did not understand what she meant and asked if she meant sleeping together in the same bed. She meant something else, but she wanted to discuss this too because she did not want to share a bed with him because she was very modest. What she really meant was the feeling that if one of them fell in love with another person, would they have the right to interfere in that relationship? After saying that, she looked at the prince. There was no emotion on his face, and she could not imagine how he was going to control her feelings with such emotional indifference. After thinking about it, he replied that he didn't care if she loved him, as long as she didn't demand reciprocity from him. And these conditions suited her, but despite the fact that he didn't care about her feelings, he expressed his dissatisfaction with other men, and for the last time turned a blind eye to her relationship with someone else. He wanted her to deal with her admirers and forget them, even though their relationship was only for a year. Maybe she didn't know, but he's a pretty awful person. At least that's what everyone says about him. And since they decided to rush the wedding, they should attend the upcoming festival together. All the nobility will be there, so there is no better place to announce the wedding. That is why the prince invited the lady to come to the castle tomorrow to discuss everything. She said she couldn't because she didn't have time. However, the assistant assured them that they had nothing to worry about, that he had been waiting for this day for a long time and had prepared everything in advance. Their rooms were already filled with furniture, beautiful and expensive chandeliers with thousands of crystals. In the yard were beautiful and large columns decorated with greenery, there were also a huge number of flower beds in the garden that would delight the eyes every day. And since everything was ready, Lady Kayla had only to move into the castle. But the problem was quite different. She had a lot of men to deal with. When the servant heard this, he went crazy, wondering what kind of men she was talking about. He started talking about how her family must be worried, and it was time to prepare the carriage for the lady, because there was not much time. She was very confused by this, and so she just burst into tears. But she happily told the prince that she needed a few days to pack her things and would be ready to move. He just exhaled heavily looking at her and realizing that it would not be easy. He also added that he would let her deal with her husband's first. Laughing, the lady agreed with him and thought how much fun it would be to mock him. Walking through the corridors of the castle, she had a question, and the prince asked her again, What is it this time? She was interested in, Why me? Among the thousands of girls who wanted to be his bride, he chose her, 
She knew he had turned down offers from several other kingdoms. She understood that he needed to contain the power of his temple and kingdom, and that required a marriage to someone very noble. In her opinion, the parties should benefit each other, but the lady did not believe that she satisfied the kingdom's side, because although she was a princess, there were better offers than her. So why did he choose Lady Kayla? Without hesitation, he answered that she was so beautiful that she even appeared to him in his dreams. She looked at him suspiciously, but he smiled and said that this was the reason he chose her. That same evening, Prince Leon stood on the balcony of his castle and watched the lady's carriage leave his courtyard. All he could think about was the fact that he had the same dream every time he lost consciousness. The dream begins with him standing and looking at an abandoned garden and Ignis. He couldn't understand what this place was and why his mother's favorite self had become like this. And at this moment, when he thinks that everything is over, she appears, and she gently says, I've been waiting for you for so long, Hyperion. He turns around to look at this woman and sees her. She says to him, Remember me, even when others forget. By stretching out her hand, she was saying that she was real. As soon as he wanted to touch her hand, the dream would end, and he would wake up. It was on those days when he dreamed about that girl that he was incredibly strong, and for a while he didn't even take his medication. Every time his body started to burn and weaken, he would immediately run to the garden. He immediately felt better, as if he had met her. And the day he met the lady in the garden, he felt the same way. The day when his dream came true, and when she asked him if he would be her husband, the prince simply could not refuse her. But he made a mistake with his answer. In real life, the girl was much more beautiful. As all the paperwork was completed, a copy of the engagement papers was to be sent to Lady Veritas. The prince's servants were very happy about it. Finally, a woman appeared in the castle of this bachelor who would become the mistress. After the prince fell ill, all his duties were taken over by his servants and advisors. Hyperion was reluctant to marry, so this complicated the situation in the castle even more. But finally, everything would change. Also, Madame Mary Rada was appointed to teach Lady Veritas. This made the prince very happy because he thought she was impudent but the second counselor was against it. He thought she was a terrible woman and did not want to let her teach the young lady. He could already imagine the poor princess running away from the castle in tears because of the woman's severity. The countess wanted to torture the lady until she gave up the title of princess, but he believed that this was the best teacher for her because it is important for a future princess to get an education. Because of this, the brothers started a quarrel. How can a young lady of 18 manage a castle without education? They quarreled because they did not know whether Lady Veritas could do what the Empress and the Saints had not done so far. After discussing all this, the brothers decided to jointly tell the prince that it would be better to choose someone else to be Lady Veritas's teacher. But he was stubborn and said that he would not change his mind no matter how much they asked him. The servants realized that the prince was testing her and at the same time believed in her and that she would be able to handle everything. They just could not recognize that it was the same prince. However, the test did not end there. Soon, Lady Veritas's reputation would begin to fall as the Countess got involved and began to prove that Kayla did not deserve it. His advisors didn't understand why the prince was doing this, and so, simply as a friend, they asked him why he chose her over Phoebe when she was trying so hard. But all he answered them was, It was the first time I had ever seen a girl cry so beautifully. Then he asked if they finally understood and said enough talk for today because he was out of patience. The servant realized what the prince wanted. He wanted her to pass all of Countess Wreath's tests so that no one else would be able to say anything about her abilities. At the same time, a girl under the prince's balcony overheard the whole conversation and became very interested in it. She saw how much the prince believed in this lady, which was quite unexpected. But does his majesty really love Lady Veritas? The girl said out loud and one of the servants heard her. He asked if she was all right, but she answered that he need not worry, that the prince did not reciprocate her love was not his fault. She reminded him that in every corner of the castle were her memories and secrets with him. She remembered all the moments she had spent with him. She knew where he liked it best. She knew what emotions he showed when he saw something he liked. So she had to see everything with her own eyes. Even if Babel liked this girl, then Svetaya herself was not good enough for the prince. Since Babel and Leon are one, they all understood what was going on. She was right. Babel did not like her and was hostile to her, despite the fact that they grew up together all their childhood. In other words, that girl had everything that the saint did not. She looked at her husband and said, Are my words still not convincing? 
I'm not good enough for him. The man had nothing to say to her, so he only told her that there were rumors about Lady Veritas's ex. The Marquis of Bate had fallen in love with the saint, and had therefore betrayed the lady to be with the saint. Saint denied these rumors. She claimed that Charles, in the future, would become the commander of the Holy Knights, and it was he who protected her, so she could not watch him suffer. They were very good friends, and he told her that he always wanted love from Lady Veritas, but he thought that the lady only took advantage of his honesty and kindness. The saint convinced her husband that Lady Veritas was manipulating the Marquis, and the Marquis had a hot temper and was very sharp in his speech. Carl just wanted to test Lady Veritas's feelings with the help of the saint, but instead of being a faithful bride, she immediately fell in love with the prince. She felt sorry for Carl because he only wanted mutual love, just like she did. She only wanted to help him, hope that they would fall in love again, but unfortunately they parted ways. The saint's heart was torn with pain. She felt that it was all her fault. These words made the prince's counselor think that Lady Veritas was a terrible person and could not be trusted. How dare she use another person's feelings? The saint went up to her husband and said, Aiden, I have known Leon for twenty years, so I have spent a very long time with you too. But Saint Foiba did not even know her real name. At the time of her birth, she was already considered Saint Ignis and the destiny of Hyperion. And her name, Foibe, meant darkness, which gives its light for the sake of those who should spread it. And only Aiden was her true good friend, so she was okay with him. And if Hyperion made that choice, she had to support him, because that was her role in the kingdom. Aiden loved Phoebe and would not forgive anyone who dared to hurt her or cause her pain. He reassured her that Veritas would never become Lion's wife, because he had invited Countess Rada as a teacher, and she knew how cruel the Countess was. Veritas was never popular in rich circles of society, despite her status. This is also evidenced by the fact that she ran away after the first day of her studies with the Duchess. It was a cruel decision, but Phoebe and Aiden could not do otherwise. Even if Veritas passes the test, she still won't stay in the castle for long. That's because Aiden, like everyone else in the castle, was loyal to her and always stood by the saint. The inhabitants of the future prince's castle feel a strong love for Saint Phobe. This is the result of Aiden's efforts, as he personally managed the castle's affairs. She understood her better than anyone else, and she had spent years with Prince Hyperion and knew him best. Therefore, Veritas had no right to swear to the castle and the prince, the saint believed.